I think I heard somebody say, do another kit build, Adam. So, your wish is my command. And this is today's kit. And straight away we can see there's a piece of paper at the top that might explain what's within. Ah, here we go. This is sold as a mini Tesla coil. However, straight away looking at the schematic here, I'm pretty sure this isn't a Tesla coil at all. And that's because before this uh, kit turned up, I've been doing a bit of research. And if you look for circuits uh, for a Tesla coil, you'll find they nearly always include this spark gap. And uh, that doesn't seem to be present here. Which brings us to Wikipedia. And of course, this explains all about Nikola Tesla, um, who invented it in around 1891 as a power supply for a system of electric lighting wireless electric lighting and it uses a radio frequency oscillator that drives an air core double tuned resonant transformer to produce high voltages at low currents and the uh, common spark excited tesla coil circuit uh, uses a high voltage supply transformer, a capacitor, and that spark gap. And uh, luckily for us, we've got that same schematic there. No, well, I think this is a Slayer Exciter circuit, which consists of an oscillator and a step up transformer using this one turn inductor and a 350 turn inductor uh, to create these high voltages at very low current. And there we are, the actual. Uh, business end the coil there and that wire has come free it was under that sticker there's one at this end 350 turns apparently on this air cord inductor it's pretty thin enamel copper wire that so with the bits all spread out on the bench here um resistors first of which there are just four two 10k resistors and two 2k resistors now somebody did ask me recently if this ok cell had any effect on the accuracy of this transistor tester well let's see 9.2 volts there 2010 ohms for this 2000 uh, ohm resistor so as far as i'm concerned that's pretty good and those resistors are nicely soldered in if i do say so myself um, on to the capacitors, I guess, which are the uh, next largest component. And uh, this is a 1 microfarad 50 volt, so let's drop that in there. See what it says. Uh, 1079 nanofarad, so that's pretty much there, isn't it? And of course, this component tester should work fine with this OK cell. Uh, because it has got a 5 volt regulator under there, which is mentioned, I think, when uh, when you turn it on. If we uh, just press it again, there we go, 9.2 volts coming in and 5 volts VCC. Oh, look, a tiny capacitor on my finger. And this little capacitor is this one here, so it's marked positive. On that side the long leg is positive and there we go we can see the negative symbol there on the side whereas this capacitor is not actually polarized so it can go in either way the legs are the same length and of course a slightly longer uh, lead there on the LED is the positive now we've got two different colors of LEDs here and I'm not entirely sure what colour this is, so they will have slightly different forward voltages. Um, anybody's guess as to which one goes where. So I think I'll go for the power connector next before I put the MOSFET and the NPN transistor in and their reasonably sized heat sinks. So the uh, MOSFET and the NPN transistor need uh, installing now and they come with these heat sinks which as I mentioned are reasonable size and it also comes with a small packet of thermal grease and of course it's best to mount them on the heat sinks before you uh, connect anything to the 
PCB to make sure all the legs are the right length and it all fits and uh, this one does. This kit presents a number of dangers, not only the high voltage but uh, the fact that you need some super glue or some other type of uh, non-brand uh, glue here to actually glue down uh, the coil which I've made a mess of. Oh well, I'm sure it'll be fine. And while still holding that coil, because the glue isn't entirely dry yet, we'll get that enameled copper wire there through its hole and uh, see if we can solder that. And uh, using some insulation tape as a plinth, we'll see if we can uh, get the enamel off this wire. And make a good contact. And with the macro lens here attached to the camera, I think that's making a reasonable connection. And of course this primary winding is a much thicker piece of cable because it's carrying more current, but lower voltage. And uh, they don't give you much wire to play with, I don't think. So that goes around the coil. Perhaps I've taken a bit too much of the uh, shielding off, but I'll somehow get that in there. And uh, there it is, pretty much completed. And if we check back to the uh, comprehensive manual here, uh, it needs 15 to 24 volts at 2 amps. Apparently that equates to 15 watts. Not sure about that one. Now I should mention this before I plug it in. Remember this is extremely high voltage, uh, but low current. But there are some people who should probably not be playing with these. People with uh, pacemakers and that sort of thing very sensitive electronic devices that uh, keep you alive. Don't be messing around with this. Hopefully the camera doesn't blow up when I put the power on. Ah, now we can just see a small discharge there at the top. Let me uh, adjust the lighting. And with my bench lights dim there, we can just see it. Now, you do get this uh, neon bulb in the uh, kit as well. So, uh, I've just realised I've got that. There we go. Wow. That's quite impressive. This is exactly what Tesla was thinking when he created his Tesla coil. That's quite impressive. And I've also got a standard CFL lamp, and that too lights up. That's fun. That's really cool. And of course, the uh, energy is exciting the gases inside this CFL lamp, and that's what's causing it to light up. And it, it's surprisingly bright. But this circuit has another trick up its sleeve and it's this section, oh, whoops. It's this section here and there is an audio input and we use the right channel here to manipulate the uh, primary coil and we can get it to make music. Now there is something disconcerting about plugging your iPad into a high voltage kit you've just created from China, but in for a penny, in for a pound if I power it up now and hopefully we'll be able to hear some music. So there we have it, the mini Tesla coil DIY kit from eBay. It plays music as well as uh, lights up lights wirelessly. How much fun is that? Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give the thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.